So if you're wondering what I'm doing here today, I'm just uh, making my way around South York and I'm currently in Clifton Park. Because just as I want to, I want to talk, there is uh, someone with uh, a big uh, leaf blower. So I'm just on my way up to uh, Sheffield actually, I've just had a look around Robin. There's not a lot happening, we just could see that people are out getting the shopping and things of that nature again. Uh, there may be a protest in uh, Sheffield, I'm not sure. There's a, a Kill the Bill thing also in Enclith Park, so I'm going to have a wander up there. And uh, we'll see if there's anything happening up in uh, Enclith Park. Not much happening here in Clifton Park. Now this is the newly done up bridge gate in Robin Town Centre, it's looking quite nice, isn't it? It's looking quite nice, now it's all finished. I think I'll call in Greg's for a cup of coffee. more happening here in Sheffield today than there was in Rotherham. So just outside the town hall we've got a protest about uh, apartheid in uh, Palestine, something I know very little about. I've listened to some of the speeches and well, I still don't quite get the gist of what's going on but I pay very little attention to it so maybe I'll have to go and listen to some more. The Communist Party of Cuba sent the following message. I'll just read a little bit. This is a message from the Communist Party of Cuba to our Communist Party here. We take advantage of this opportunity to express gratitude from our party for the permanent solidarity work developed by the Communist Party of Britain to end the criminal, economic, financial and commercial blockade imposed on the Cuban people for more than 60 years. We reiterate the willingness to continue strengthening the relationship or friendship between our parties. That's the end of the message from the Cuban Communist Party. Today's action in solidarity with Cuba and against the blockade are happening all over the world. I can see the one straight in front of me saying biased media coverage. And I think that very much too covers the media coverage of Cuba. <laughs> One o'clock. On the outside, Cole Brothers, aka John Lewis, this is now shut. There's been a lot of suspicions for a very long time that it was going to shut. I think technically it might still have been with a chance of uh, remaining open, but uh, I don't think it will be very hopeful. Here on the window, on the main entrance, there's lots of little messages that people have left in support of the business. It's here as Cole Brothers, uh, many years ago, or early 1900s I think, has a lot of memories for a lot of people. A lot of people will be sad to see it go, which is the way things are heading. Now John Lewis was uh, one of the major stores here in Sheffield and according to these messages it looks like a lot of people only came just for John Lewis. Although it looks like this person wasn't too bothered. <laughs> 
and someone's giving him a 5 out of 10 for spelling. Now this person basically referred to John Lewis as giving Sheffield a slap in the face for shutting and not uh, refurbishing the store. So there's plenty of work, there won't just be shoppers who are missing out, there'll be a lot of job losses as well, which will be a blow for the city. And also for people in general, given the number of job losses we've had since the pandemic started. But there is a petition, so it'd be interesting to see if it... Uh, if anyone takes notice of the petition, it says on there 24,167 uh, of sign. That's quite a lot. It's a warm sunny day, and I'll go for a little wander around uh, Encliffe Park for the other side of Sheffield. I hear there might be a kill the bill thing at some point. Well, probably now because it's one o'clock. Don't know whether there's much else on, but uh, it's quite busy. Ecclesall Road was packed. We realised that it's not just about our freedom, it's not just about the freedom of Palestinians, but it's about our collective freedom to work against these kind of authoritarian re regimes. Um, and lastly, we would say that the bill is from one admittance of fear, obviously. It's admittance of fear of the people of power, the power of people. The, the amount of power that people, when they come together, have. And we need to keep them afraid of this well, of our voices, we need to keep them afraid of the power that we have because if we don't, they will. There is absolutely no incentive for them to stop any of the complicity, any of the ties they have to other regimes like the Israeli one. And we need to keep this up both for our own sakes and for Palestinians. I, uh, I just wanted to say a quick word about what happened at Hillsborough. Uh, when they let Duck and Field off in legal terms, what that amounted to was saying that South Yorkshire Police didn't have a duty of care, they couldn't have reasonably foreseen what the consequences were actually going to be. And uh, when they've made this decision now with Peter Metcalf, South Yorkshire Police's solicitor, the same solicitor who oversaw the uh, fabrication of uh, police witness statements at Orgreave, uh, is the one responsible for the review and alteration process where they systematically edited police witness statements after Hillsborough, and uh, so for the bloke, whatever the judge is called, to say that uh, it's not a perversion of the course of justice to alter police witness statements because it was for a public inquiry and, uh, and not for a court of law, so it's not a perversion of justice. In legal terms, essentially, what he's saying is you're allowed to write public inquiries, so I just wanted to say that. Thanks. Thank you all hear me. Right. Uh, my name's Leo, uh, I'm here with Acorn. Uh, we're a community and tenants union uh, working in Sheffield to advance the rights of renters, uh, of county tenants uh, and of community members. And uh, I'd just like to say, uh, I'd just like to emphasize our support for uh, Kilgore protests and Sheffield against policing bill. It's been amazing so far. I've been to attend it all night. We rely on people power. We rely on the ability of people to come together and organise around issues in their community to make their voices heard. And this bill amounts to an ability for people with connections, power, uh, people who are owning property to say, these people are too annoying, these people are too loud, we don't want to hear from them. Uh, and that attacks a very fundamental uh, power of our organising and of trade union organising and of all forms of elected political organising uh, and I think you know stand here can understand how that works into all sorts of matters whether it's Palestine solidarity uh, whether it's 
Chief Injustice for Aubrey uh, and Pilgra. Uh, so yeah, uh, thank you all for, for coming, coming out and hopefully I'll see you again soon. I'd like to make the case about many issues within our democracy, such as our electoral system. I'm sure many of you have heard the first past the post, which is essentially, if, if even if like 70% of the people vote for different candidates, if you have one more vote than the second place, you will get all the seats. And then that MP, if will then promptly most likely only follow the party line. They might not even respond to constituent concerns, such as I emailed my MP, Miriam Cakes, about the police bill, and all I got was the party line in a wall of text about how this bill that will massively restrict protests will actually not restrict protests. Our electoral system is broken, essentially. Look at 1951. The Labour Party won more votes than the Conservative Party, but due to how the system works, the Conservatives got a majority of seats. Uh, if you look at, say, parties can win millions of seats, the Liberal Democrats can often win more seats than the SNP, yet the SNP can take all of Scotland. That is due to our electoral system. It's uh, this morning I got an invitation to have a coronavirus vaccine. Uh, apparently, if I have it, it will severely reduce the chances of me getting an infection. But after I've done that, even with severely reduced chances of getting an infection, you must wear a mask and you must practice social distancing. Is that not a bit contradictory? Now, there's not much anti-lockdown stuff happening in uh, Sheffield today. Uh, there's a big one in London. I don't know how many people are going. There weren't many people in the city centre for, that I recognised from the lockdown protest, so uh, probably a few people will be going down to London. It'll be interesting to see how much media coverage it gets, and it's interesting to see how different kinds of, uh, different kinds of stories get different types of media coverage. Because the uh, anti-lockdown movement had very little in the way of press coverage. And a lot of people complain about that. But I've just been in the, the city centre where there's been a protest for uh, uh, Palestine. Uh, apparently they have uh, very little media coverage as well. Uh, a bloke said that they had, um, they'd had protests here in Sheffield and had very little coverage. And I believe uh, someone from the uh, Kill the Bill uh, movement said something about uh, being very little uh, press coverage of that, although I, I've definitely heard more about the Kill the Bill uh, than some of the other movements. I think with the Kill the Bill, it's um, in some areas there's been rioting and uh, looting, and obviously that, that will attract media attention. Whereas a small protest like this one here in the uh, uh, park probably won't attract the same level of attention uh, that uh, riots will. <laughs>